Welcome to my first official makeover on this channel. Through the other projects I've done on our house, I've gained more confidence in my skills <laughs> and I'm ready to tackle wall molding and an entire table. The end results look simple and elegant, which I love, but it was a lot of detailed work, so let's jump in. I'm starting by clearing off the wall, removing screws and dusting, all important prep work for painting. I wanted to do a larger test for the paint I chose and ended up loving it after a day of seeing it in the day's changing light. I'm measuring for the table I want to build, which I decided I wanted to be the whole length of the entry tile so it feels grand and substantial when you walk in the door. I'm a visual person and I find it helpful to draw out what I'm envisioning in my head. I'm also adding measurements and little details that the final scene will have, just so I can see it on paper. Now I'll tape off the middle of the wall and my table. This helped me be completely sure I was comfortable with the size I wanted. Next, I'm drawing all the lines of the wall molding to see how I like the layout on the actual wall. Um, husband approves. I went to Home Depot to get all the wood, which is probably the most exciting part. <laughs> I used to be intimidated coming to this section as it can be overwhelming. If you're unsure of how something works, they always have friendly employees to help. More prep work. Filling holes and removing blinds so I can paint on the inside of the windowsill, which I think made it look more complete and finished. I finished most of the first coat and I'm working on the second coat today. I probably should have done a primer layer before I painted. The paint I went with is called Simply White by Bear in Satin. I chose the Dynasty line for a better coverage and easier cleaning. I have all my cuts written down and I'm ready to transfer to the wood. Something to note is to only mark one cut per piece before you cut if you're using one long piece of wood for multiple pieces, if that makes sense. Since the saw takes away part of the wood when you cut it, wait to mark your other measurements until after you've cut the first ones. I have really loved my Metavo miter saw. It's very affordable if you plan to do many projects around your house. However, if you can afford, get one with a sliding arm instead of the fixed one. I think that would have been more versatile for me in the long run. I'll link mine in the description box below. Remember, 
measure twice, cut once. <laughs> and make sure you're cutting the correct angle. Make sure it's exactly the cut you want or else you'll run into some issues like I did. I had to end up piecing three pieces of wood together to make one long one because I cut it wrong. <laughs> so um, another piece of advice would be to get some extra wood at the hardwood store just in case. I'm using my nail gun to fix each piece to the wall. I pre-drew the lines for the boxes, so a level really isn't necessary, but I like doing things the hard way, apparently. I'm making sure to add nails at different angles which will help hold the wood to the wall since I'm not using any glue. So I'm uh, just getting out my wood pieces, laying them out, and getting them prepped for assembly. I'm using my Craig jig for pocket holes, and this thing is amazing. I definitely recommend investing in one if you're going to be doing wood projects. I definitely recommend also getting the Craig brand clamps instead of ones that screw they are just a lot easier and quicker to use and the other ones are the worst so save yourself the headache I'm also using these corner clamps, which I got on Amazon uh, they come in a four pack and they are a must-have if you're joining two pieces of wood at a 90 degree angle I also went back and added wood glue as well to keep it sturdy. Um, if you don't have a Craig jig for pocket holes, you could definitely screw the legs in from the side and cover it up with like wood filler or sawdust mixed with wood glue. However, the pocket holes are much more secure, so I would recommend using that instead. We ended up changing out the previous boob light for this much fancier boob light and we're really pleased. I am adding some wood filler to every single nail hole. This is the most tedious part, but it's absolutely necessary. And then I'm just going to do a bunch of sanding. So there's a lot of sanding involved. I'm caulking all the seams which really elevates the finished product. It isn't a necessary step but I think it really completes the look of what we're going for here. Um, I love using this caulk tool instead of my finger and baby wipes to clean up the line as well.
I started to paint the molding and then I realized that it was raw wood <laughs> and I needed to prime it first. So I went back in with a primer on the rest of these. Once that was finished drying, then I went and painted over that with my wall color. I'm measuring to place the mirror back on the wall. I want it right in the middle over the table. And I had a little help from Senor Muscles. I ended up going back for another piece of wood to add a shelf for storage and sturdiness. I thought I wanted to distress and stain the entry table, which is why it has taken me so long to finish this project. <laughs> but I'm really enjoying the light wood and clean lines, but maybe I'll change my mind one day and change the look of it. two scrap pieces of wood to make sure each side was even and use pocket holes and wood glue to fasten to the legs. I'm going to sand and eventually seal with a polyurethane top coat to protect it. I'll also need to fill the pocket holes with plugs, but that's a job for another day. Alright, almost finished people. I filled all the nail holes on the baseboard and I'm now sanding them down and painting on a primer and then following that with the same color wall paint. project was so worth all the hard work and I would do it again in a heartbeat. I love how inviting and calm our entryway is now and it's a spot in my home that makes me feel instantly relaxed when I walk by it. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next time.